ain't drunk. I'm just drinking. But well, you're so high. Oh, man, you know I ain't high. But well, you're so high. Yeah, well, I just take a little sip every now and then. But well, you're so high. Hey, kids. We're back. All right. We're going to wrap this up mostly in this video as far as the build goes. The only thing that's not going to be put in is the camera at this point because I'm still working on the gimbal solution. Uh, if it works, great. If it doesn't, it's just going to go in the fucking nose, and I'll do a I'll do a video on that too. So I did bolt down the flight controller from the last time we were here. Let's see if you can see that a little bit better. So she's in there. Everything's pretty much nice and neat. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to straighten things up. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mount our receiver. Um, I'm going to cut this plastic off, and we are going to mount this boomerang here okay um, now as far as mounting this goes if you look at how these are laid out these are dipole antennas okay and optimally okay for the best range you want them like this you want them polarized together this is your worst case scenario this is your best case scenario okay so it really doesn't matter radially which way we put these things on um, so what I did 3D print a mount that it basically is just going to, we're going to put a little bit of CA glue in there, slide this guy down here, boop, lock him in. I'm going to rough this up a little bit, and then we're going to glue this guy down to probably right there, I'm thinking. And just a simple poke, hole poke in there will get it right on in. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to cut off, I can take this off. We're going to cut off this sheath, pop off this antenna, and put plug that antenna in after we pop a hole into this guy. So to keep things nice and neat, we're probably going to mount, I'm just going to use probably double-sided tape or something of that nature. Might even just do it right here. We'll see. Okay. So that is what we're going to do next. And then after that, we're going to mount the GPS. For the GPS, I 3D printed a cover because I lost my cover in a crash a long time ago. So what we're going to do, orientation should not matter because orientation is usually only if you're worrying about having a magnometer or a compass. So, and I also put in um, an LED. In the top because we're gonna program our iNav to tell us when this is flashing red it's basically gonna be saying no satellites when it's flashing blue it's gonna say that means it's acquiring satellites and when it flashes green it has satellite 3d lock and then we can take off I am NOT gonna be putting a beeper in this just because why bother so we got to figure out also the best place for our GPS. Now, you cannot mount the GPS on the wings of this, which I wouldn't do anyway. A lot of people do. A lot of people mount their antenna on one wing far away. You know, we can't do that because these are detachable wings. So I think, hang on, we might just go in here right on the top. I think that's going to be a pretty good uh, method to do this. Maybe towards the back a little bit more and it should be fine. So what we're going to do with programmable LEDs, the difference between a programmable LED and a regular LED, a regular LED has a red and black five volts, that's it. A programmable LED has five volts, positive, negative, and a signal wire. Now, if you look at this, I don't know if you guys can see this, okay? There's your out, there's your in. So you got, what is this? Very difficult to see, positive signal, and then ground on this side, okay? And then you would daisy chain this LED to the next LED to the next LED to the next LED if you were putting in more than one. But we're only putting in one, so that makes our life very simple. So I'm gonna solder this up, mount that antenna, and uh, carve a hole in the top of this guy, probably towards the back, I'm thinking. That's looking good to me. So we will do that and be right back. And we're back. So here's what we have done. First thing I did before I forgot is I did conformal coat the XT60 just in case, you know, I don't know. It, you're not gonna have anything to really short out on, but it's the quadcopter guy coming out in me. Um, the other thing that we did, I'll zoom in a little bit here, is I roughed, I 
basically just took a scratch off like this or a screwdriver or whatever you want to use, poked a hole through the foam, ran the antenna wire down, used hot glue. I took a razor blade on the back of, here's the, uh, the one for my buddy Pat's bird. Uh, basically take a razor blade and go like that. Just scuff the surface up a little bit because when you 3D print something, it's very, very smooth. And I did the same thing with the foam underneath here. I took pretty hot, hot glue, put it around the uh, print, and then stuck it down there. That's all there is to that. And, uh, you know, any position you want, doesn't really matter. Like I said, whether it's this way or whether it's this way, almost doesn't really matter because you're never going to be flying directly in line with yourself. Um, then we took the TBS Crossfire. I used double-sided tape, 3M double-sided tape, and just stuck that down the back. I did put a little bit of hot glue on the connector here, just in case there's a jarring or something on landing that crashes, fucks things up. It'll keep it in there. The other thing that we did is, or I did, I should say, there's no we. I say that all the time, like I have a fucking split personality or something. But anyway, wired in the LED. And the LED goes into an, an Omnibus F3 signal positive 5 volts ground, okay? Um, and if there's the whole schematic. So this is where we put the LED. Uh, I did wire that in, and I made a harness with the GPS, okay? So I took those wires for the LED, zip stripped them to the GPS harness. The other thing I did is I took that same scratch all, and I put a hole through this spine, put a zip strip around it. I also did hot glue, put a little bit of hot glue right here on the GPS plug. Um, I did put it in the correct orientation just because you never know. I mean, I might need it for someday. Um, and then I put a hole through here, put a zip strip around it, and then kind of strengthened the foam surrounding area with hot glue for a strain relief. And I did the same thing down here. And what I do with these is I'll take a zip strip. This is just a little JJ tip. Hang on. Haha, <laughs> JJ tips. Okay. I'll put the wires through first, obviously. Then I will make a loop around it. Not tight yet. Then either with the zip strip, cut it down to like yay, and then push it into the foam, make a hole, and then twirl it around. Then take a bunch of hot glue, put it around the hole, then stick the zip strip back into it, and you have a nice lanyard. Okay, so this is going to be a good stress relief. Um, so when we're taking off the canopy and whatnot, it doesn't fuck up. Another zip strip trick that I actually learned from Grandma Roto Geek back in the day, which and a lot of you guys already know this. This is just a fun tip. Um, when my mom wraps a Christmas present, you need to stick a fucking dynamite to get the ribbon off. The woman is just... I don't know if she's in the fucking Navy or what, but what you do with ribbon, when you want it to curl on a Christmas present, you take a scissors blade and you go like that. Well, I do that with zip strips. When I need to make a curve like this, and you run into this a lot with quads, you're trying to get around the framework or whatever, I'll take the zip strip and my thumb, put it around an object, like a screwdriver, go like that, and it makes a nice Bardwell tail, little pigtail, and you just scoop it through there, and you're done. Very cool. Um, and we also routed a hole into the foam, put the GPS dome on top, and this will be glowing, whatever color it is uh, glowing at the time. I made it a little bit bigger um, because I fucked up, but that's okay. I just filled it up with hot glue, just hot glued this in, and bam, it's perfect. So when we go to plug this in, Looks just like that. No big deal. Pretty easy. Um, what else did we do? So that's good. Now, the problem with mounting your GPS here is the fact that you're always tethered to the canopy. Is that good? Is that bad? Eh, I don't know. That's just how I always do them. Um, I don't love stuff on the outside. I hate stuff out on the wings. I just think that's stupid. I, we did, like I said, rotate the flight controller negative 90 degrees. And we will have to change that in iNav, which that's a separate video because I want the um, SD card and the USB accessible. And this plane really allows itself to do that. It's great. The, right where this camera hole is, is a perfect, perfect spot for putting in this type of gear. So we did yesterday um, hook up 
the, uh, there's a camera lead on there, I'll be damned. Uh, we did hook up the lead for the VTX, which is this guy. That is the next thing we're gonna do, and then we're done. Aside from hooking up the camera, and I'm waiting on that. We're gonna see how that goes. Um, here is the VTX. This particular VTX, they say it's long range. Eh. This is gonna be our test bed, this plane, our test bed for long range, because I'm not a long range guy. I'm really not. I get lost like in my fucking neighborhood, uh, you know, but my buddy Pat's idea. So these run about 50 bucks a pop. They're not the cheapest things in the world. They're 800 milliwatt, but they're supposed to be really good. I don't know, we'll see. So we already have the power wired up into here. They give you two separate pigtails for, um, why do they? Oh, right angle and a straight angle, okay? Easy enough. So where do we want to put this? I am going to start this project, this long range project out. I'm not worried about the goggles because I got those big fucking 12 turn helical antennas and all that stuff. So I'm, I'm not worried about ground station, if you will. But what I want to test is the longevity or distance of the VTX and what antennas are best to use on standard uh, megahertz that we all use for FPV and then we'll probably boost these up to the uh, a higher long range if we need to so yeah pretty cool it has smart audio I think and all that other stuff which I don't use I just don't I'm sorry you know being able to change your milliwatt power and being able to change your freaking channel I fly alone 99.999 percent of the time I don't need smart audio I don't hook it up ever so I think I have just to do it um, but we're going to use a far view for starting out, and I think I'm going to put it right here because I don't want everything on one side. So we're going to put it maybe right here. We'll just pop a hole in the fuselage, um, and that's really about it. Uh, it's going to be pretty straightforward to do. And then we're just going to use a little bit of hot glue and stick that in. I should 3D print a nice little... Actually, I might have something. Where's that... Uh... Yeah, I might have something. We'll, we'll see what we can do. But anyway, so that's the next thing that we're going to do. And then we're pretty much done. Then it's going to be set up. We'll pop in the camera. Camera's either going to go in one of the like five nose cones they give us, or it's going to go on a gimbal that I'm making for the front. I haven't decided that yet. Uh, but either way, that's, that's inconsequential. I could care less about the camera's the easiest part of the bit, obviously. So without further ado, let's go ahead and put in the VTX, we do have to make sure and keep in mind that our uh, lead reaches, which it does just fine. So bam, be right back. All right, and we're back. Okay, so what we have done, very, very simple. We put the VTX in, we already had it wired up. This is the video signal I have not put in yet. Um, Cause I'm just waiting for the camera. There's no point in uh, doing that just yet. And what we did is I took the VTX a trick that I use with uh, building any foam plane, whether it's a wing, whether it's a fixed wing, whatever the case may be, I will use my, where the fuck is it, my trusty dusty double-sided tape, and I'll put it on the back of the VTX, or where the heat sink's at, right? But then what I do is I take a piece of twice as long as I need, then I fold it in half, that gives me two layers of tape, and I put it on the bottom side you know, right where the heat sink is, which is fine, that's common sense, right? Then I take really hot, hot glue and put a, a squiggle of hot glue on the double-sided tape, then stick it to the foam because uh, it just sticks a thousand times better. It's just absolutely perfect. So that is good. We ended up using the 90 degree angle antenna and let's see if I can get this in shot. Fuck it, we'll do it the old fashioned way. All right, so what I did with the antenna, we're starting off with the far view pagoda, which honestly probably should just start off with a linear polarized, but that's okay. Um, I wanna see how well this does, because I've gone a mile out with this and it's they've been fine. What I did with these mounts, where, what I do with it here? This guy here is basically all we did. I took an Allen wrench, I stuck up through the foam, put a hole in it for the coax. Snuck the coax through the hole, which is easy enough. Then I put two M3 screws through that. And just like you would, these are just nylon like you use on a quad. And I threaded them in, they thread perfect, not into the foam, into the brass. And then 
I pushed it and made an indent with the two screws for the uh, into the foam. Then again, just like we did with the uh, FC, I took hot glue, I put it across both screws and the coax coming through. So there's three holes, right? All three, and then pushed it in. Nice hot, hot glue you want to really set into that foam. And look, thing's solid as a rock. Bam, perfect. So, believe it or not, that is it. We are done, aside from hooking up the camera and the VTX, poof, we're done. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna get a prostate check again. You know, so we added a lot of electronics since the last time, better safe than sorry. Okay, put your meter on continuity check. You should get at most probably one beep out of your XT60. Perfect. So I feel pretty confident I've done this before. Let's go ahead and plug it in. Okay, our VTX is <laughs> our VTX is working, our receiver is working, our flight controller is working, and our GPS is working. That's actually pretty cool. Hang on, let's turn this off. <laughs> um, it's that color because nothing's programmed on the flight controller yet, but that's okay. It'll be. Oh no, that's no. I'm sorry. That's the actual GPS light. That's not our LED. I don't have it turned on yet in uh, iNav, so no big deal. Um, it's actually kind of cool looking. That'll be neat. Uh, so yeah, that's really about it. I do need to fill in this little hole underneath. I'll go ahead and do that. Y'all don't need to see that, I don't think. Um, actually, I think that's it. I think that's it. So I'm going to strap in this little 3S battery. It's just a little 2200 that I've had, from, I've had for a thousand years from the olden days. They put them in backwards, isn't that lovely? That's okay. We're just gonna strap it in because I'm going to use it, all right? Uh, we're gonna, because you have to have a lot, you have to have power on for the GPS to work, and I gotta set this up in iNav, and blah, 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 blah. So, and then we're gonna go over flight setup at a later date, and all that other good stuff. So, when she's all put together, <laughs> it doesn't look much different, except for a couple little doohickeys on top. Everything fits nice and neat. Let's make sure. Yep. Perfect. Look at that. Bam. So we got our long range uh, receiver. We got our VTX, 800 milliwatt. We got our GPS on the top. Bam. We're done. So as long as we get GPS signal, <laughs> we shall be good. So until the next one, kids, keep your shy side up. Take care. Bye.